The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, January 25th, and uh, our Old Testament lesson for this week is from Micah chapter 6, on the Old Old Testament reading, um, major prophet work here, Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And um, I'll be getting this out in the morning. So we will follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymn. So we'll go ahead and start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Micah chapter 6, beginning at uh, the first verse. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, the king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord? With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. Uh, Blessed God, as we plead our case before you, we recognize that your indictment uh, stands against us. And um, in view of our sin, we... we, uh, we have no excuse. Uh, We we are without excuse. Our our, our mouths are stopped. And um, we instead ask for your mercy. And we thank you for the, the, uh, the salvation that you have given us in your Son. We thank you that um, despite the fact that, that our offerings would be worthless before you, that we could give, uh, give even our, our, our children as an offering, and that would not be pleasing to you, but, but that in your mercy you have given your Son for us as that pleasing sacrifice who, who stood in our place, that we would, that we would have your goodness, that we would have your righteousness, that we would have the promise of the kingdom that he has won for us and and did so in joy. And we uh, pray that you would bless us to then do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly before you in view of your graciousness to us through your son Jesus as you live and reign One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right. um, So in this passage, um, you know, so much of the the major and minor prophets is written in uh, in, in view of the the disobedience of of, of the kingdom of Israel. you know, after after the the division of the kingdom, and and the, the threat, the coming threat of of the Babylonian captivity and all of that, um, so this is this is another one of those uh, where where as 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 Micah starts, uh, well I should say as, as this passage starts with with, with words from the Lord, um, he says, "Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear your voice." You know, as I, as I prayed, I made that note. You know, I think what we see here is is saying, oh yeah, you know, plead, plead your case. Try try to try to prove that you're right, and um, and and then and then there's the 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 alternative or the um, component to that. Yeah, here here mountains, here be here mountains. The uh, the indictment of the Lord and. Um, it, you, you, yeah, so, so this is like it's like there's a jury here, and and the the Lord as the note here says the Lord as plaintiff charged Israel with failure to do to, to do what he required, and it goes on. Uh, let's see. So here you mountains the indictment of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth for the Lord has indictment against his people and he will contend with Israel, and then you have these questions, um, which obviously are not true. You know how, what have I done to you? 
the Lord saying this to his people, What have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent before you Moses and Aram, Aaron and Miriam. Uh, remember what Balak the king of Moab devised and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him. Uh, so, so, so this is, uh, let, let, let's touch on this real quick. This is, first of all, talking in verse 4 about, uh, about the redemption from Egypt and their slaves to, to Pharaoh, right? And you had the rescue through Moses with, with Aaron and Miriam at his side and, uh, and, and the salvation uh, of God's people through the Red Sea. You know, what did I do to you then? Did I deserve that you would reject me, right? And then, and then, um, my people remember what Balak, the king of Moab, devised. He was going to Moab was going to was going to curse Israel, and 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 Balaam uh, re refused to do it. Uh, this is let me let me see. This is Numbers twenty two, uh, and and, uh, and and let me see if it goes. Yeah, and and then it says uh, in in what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, and and how, how the Lord rescued His people from from Moab in that, and um, and he so he he says well what why. I did all this. Why did you? Why why did you do that? Or why, why do you reject me? And um, as, as it says, when we when we think and speak as though God wants this is a note I have. When we think and speak as though God wants a, to rob us of joy in life, we treat God as our oppressor. We forget His saving acts on our behalf, creation, redemption, and sanctification. Right? That's the three articles of the creed. We have been. God has blessed us and created us. He has blessed us and redeemed us in Christ. He has blessed us and sent the Holy Spirit to make us holy as well. And so, so as we look at how the world sees these commandments of God as oppressive, as we look around and see how, how, uh, how the, the commandments call us, first of all, to have him as our God, but, but also how we are called to love our neighbor, and um, in, in, in the ways that we see that as oppressive, uh, and you know, I always come back to this, and this certainly isn't the only the only way we do it, but but it's so prevalent in our society that we have this understanding that the the sexual ethic described in the Bible, in the sixth commandment, is is, is oppressive, and it's not right. This is this is this is out of love. It's out of love for creation. It's out of love for for what is right, for what what God has has given sex to be. It's out of love for for what um, what is best for. The, 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 the creative and, and wonderful fruit that, that comes from, from, from the sexual act of, of, of procreation, right? And, and as I say that, uh, you know, I don't think we have to understand that, that sex is only for procreation, but we see it as a, as a fruit of it, and, and um, a proper fruit of it when it's, you know... And, and, and so... Um, and yet we, we see so much as, as oppressive, right? Or looking at... at, at um, how 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 th there are restrictions on on things like um, uh, God calls us to be to be sober people, right? Um, you know we, we we see alcohol in the Bible, but but He calls us to be sober and not He calls us not to drunkenness, that sort of thing. We see that as oppressive. You know th these these ways that 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 uh, you know the, the church is called well. You know if you don't if you don't don't do these things and you're 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 prude and, and your God is oppressive and that sort of thing. And, and yet, God gives us these commands out of love. So, so as we realize our guilt, then it goes on. What shall I come with? What shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings? You know, should I bring sacrifices? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, kind of, you know, or, or uh, calves a year old. Will, will they be pleased with rams? Ten thousand rivers of, rivers of oil. Even my firstborn my transgression and of course the reality is that as we are accused of these things and 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 uh, convicted of our guilt um, there is no atonement that we can make that is sufficient but in love upon love God doesn't demand our firstborn but gives his firstborn for us and um, and so he redeems us and in that redemption then we seek to to, to do what, what he desires, to do what is just, to do what is right, to, to, to love kindness, to, to walk humbly with him, and, and then a humility of recognizing our need for him. And this, you know, this, this humility that fits so well with Matthew 5 that we were talking about in, in the Beatitudes and in, in 1 Corinthians 1 that we talked about yesterday. And, and there's, a, there's a, an interesting um, reference uh, that, that, that connects to, to this and to 
to um, to First Corinthians one. If you remember yesterday, we closed with saying, that let, "Let him who boasts boast in the Lord." And in, in Jeremiah nine twenty three to twenty four. Uh, thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for in these things I delight, declares the Lord. And may he delight in those in us by his grace. Amen. Uh, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.